Acts chapter 20. Now, by men who know a lot more than I do these dates, and they could be off, plus or minus, we see a date of A.D. 59 in my Bible. Romans, written about 57 A.D. Luke's Gospel, written between 57 and 62 A.D. And now we remember we've seen a year and six months. We've seen several years of layover. Luke is with Paul, so that would be the best time to sit back and write the Gospels. And this is true. If Luke is writing this around this time, maybe a few more years later than what we're, where we're reading tonight's chapter, well, you know Paul would have the Gospel of Luke once, Paul, once Luke writes it. That would be in the hands of Paul and the company. Romans, they say 57 A.D. I don't know, because Paul hasn't been to Romans. That's later in, in the end of the... Unless he writes a letter to them before he goes. Um, and after the uproar was ceased in Ephesus, Paul called unto him disciples, embraced him, and departed for to go into Macedonia. Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts, he, he had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece. It is following the journey that Paul gone. And there were both three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. So the Jews, again, they're, they're out to kill him. He said, why does it never stop? Did, didn't Paul stop his persecution? Yeah, but one seed plant produces much more seeds and a lot of flowers for fruit. And they accompanied him into Asia, South Tyre of Beria, and of the Thessalonians, yeah, and of the Thessalonians, uh, Archytus and Sicetus, and Gainus, where is that name again? Of Derby, and Timothy, which is Timothy, and of Asia, Tychicus and Triopathus. And Tychicus, you'll find Ephraim. Uh, Eph 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 Ephesians 6, 21, and Colossians 4, 7, 8, 2 Timothy 4, 12, and Titus 3, 12. Now notice, Sophitire and Iberia, the Thessalonians. There are Thessalonians that came down to Paul to meet with him. One of the two books that we have, First and Second Thessalonians. So there are people that, that came to Paul, helped Paul, and there are people that Paul cared about in Thessalonica. And they, they bring no, news to Paul. This is what's going on. This is what this is the news from the church. This is the question causing him to write an epistle to them. And we see, uh, and the, these going before tarried for us at Torres. And we sailed away from Philippi, Philippians, after the days of unleavened bread, Jewish holidays, this is right after the, the Passover. It's a new year. Passover was a new year. The next day after that, unleavened bread. Because they couldn't go, when they left Egypt, their bread didn't have leaven. And came unto them to Torres in five days, where we, we Luke writing, we abode seven days. Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached on them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continue his speech unto midnight. So what we're seeing so far is about the time of the Gospel of Luke, they're layovers. Luke would go to his room, write out, then they'd go on the ministry, and you know, when he had time, he wrote some, I would assume something like that. These layovers. These layovers may have been so Luke could write. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, now that's not the kind of guy I like for preaching. You get long preaching with me, I, uh, you know. 
I'm a man that says 30 to 45 minutes and then your message is done. And there's been surveys, there's been studies. So anything, especially after an, after an hour of meetings or talking or you lost your point, you lost your thing. People are not paying attention no more. He sunk down with sleep. That's my own opinion. And fell down from the third law. And was taken up dead. This guy falls out a window, hits the ground, he's dead. I've been to some preachers where they've been dead. I'm not saying Paul's dead. I've sat under some preachers that were dead. Long-winded. But we know Paul's long preaching, but we know he produces results. Paul went down and fell upon him. And embracing him, said, trouble not yourselves, for his life is, is in him. And when he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten, he, resurrection, and talked a long while. He was long preaching. He, he heals this guy to have dinner. Then he gets long talking again. A lot of people probably would not like Paul's messages. He was long-winded, according to the Bible. Even to the break of day, he preached all night. Well, maybe that's what's wrong with America. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. Maybe we set our clocks for noon and that's it. It's over with. It says already it was, they had much lights. And he preached at the break of day. That would be about the same time as the, the cock crew. That's the break of the day, 6 a.m. They brought the young man alive and were not a little comfort. Man, they, they, they were rejoicing. I made jokes after that. And when we went f before to ship and sailed on to, you got to be careful how you pronounce some words in the Bible, Asols. They are intended to take in Paul, for so had he appointed, minding himself to go afoot. And when he had met with us at Asols, we took him in and came to Mytheline. So people are waiting for Paul. Here he comes. He's here. Come to the come to this assembly. Come speak to us. Come to our town square and preach. He's wanted. And we sailed since and came the next day over against Chinos. And you can outline these on a map. And the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried at Trigolinium. And the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he had hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. So he's minded. He wants to be at Jerusalem, and he wants to be at Jerusalem by a certain day, Pentecost. That's kind of funny because that's 50 days after the uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's when Peter stood up with the first keys and preached to, to the Jews. Now today, from you know, from Asia to Jerusalem, you know, what, 50 minutes maybe. Not during this time. And from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came unto Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons. So he calls the Ephesians over, who he writes epistles to, and has a little meaning with. He's not going to them, he calls the meaning to them. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews. Man, those Jews have been after me. You guys have been my tears. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable on you. I taught you everything that God's taught me. But I have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. I've taught you in a gathering. I went over your house. I went over their house. I went to their house. And we, we sat down and we talked the word. Remember Martha and Mary? Martha's coming about in the kitchen serving. Mary's sitting down to, at the feet of Jesus, hearing the word. That's what's still going on here. They're in a the house. 
They'll have a meal, breaking of the bread, they'll eat, and then there'll be the teaching of the word. Ter testifying both the Jews and also the Greeks. Repentance towards God. Oh, look at that. And faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. What's he preaching? Repentance and faith. And now, behold, I go bound, tied, chained. In the spirit unto Jerusalem. Not knowing the things that shall befall me there. He's getting a little. The Holy Spirit's working on him. Because we do know. But by, by later on. The book of Acts. The Holy Spirit. God Jesus Christ. Does not want him in Jerusalem. We've already told. He's wanted in Rome. He's kind of doing a, a Jonah. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying, saying that bonds and affliction abide me. How would you, like you like to have God speak to you in ministry? You know what? You're going to be bound. You're going to be tied. You're going to have afflictions. That's your ministry, Paul. That was from chapter 9. When Ananias came to him, he said, listen, that guy is going to suffer for me. But none of these things move me. <laughs> the Holy Ghost witnessing to you, Paul, will not move you to do right. Even Paul was a sinner. I probably just lost a bunch of people. Because some people think Paul is Jesus Christ. Oh, there, there are people out there, uh, whatever Paul says, forget Moses, because, you know, you're not supposed to listen to Moses and all that. Paul, well, Luke just wrote to us that the Holy Ghost has been telling Paul, don't you go. I'm going to bind you. And Paul's like, none of these things move me. You, you mean the Holy Ghost, Paul? <laughs> Aren't we all human? I've done some things that the Holy Ghost told me not to do. And I've done no things that the Holy Spirit told me to do. Both ways. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, 2 Timothy 4, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, look at that, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Repentance, faith, faith and the gospel. That's what Paul's preaching. That's Paul's ministry. Nothing else. I have not shunned to show you everything the counsel of God showed me. Anything else is sin. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Now that's a bold statement by Paul. And some people say all means all that all to be all. I heard a preacher in California, and I sent them a nice little letter. They said, well, explain to me that when the king threw the, all the people that was against Daniel in the lion's den, it said it break all their bones, including the, the, the anvil and the hammer. Sometimes all is general. You tell me Paul witnessed to everybody he came in 100%. I don't know. But sometimes you got to watch out what men's definitions are and see what the Bible is. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Counsel of God. What God has taught. What God has shown Paul. That we're to know and nothing extra. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. And to all the flock. Okay, I believe that's all the flock there. We say all men. Is all the flock doing right before God? You tell me everybody in Asia is serving God as a disciple of Jesus Christ. They're all doing what, what God expects them to do. I don't think so. All the flock I would, assume, I, would, I would assume here would be those that are trying to do right, those that want to do right, and those that want to hear God. 
That all is, is a is a tricky word, and some people will I hear this message and denounce me as, as an occult or something because I don't want to state the word all. You need to go in your Bible and read where all is and find a reference to all, like I said in Daniel. All their bones were broken. Now, if it's all, all the people had bones broken, and Paul did witness to all men. Do you realize how remarkable that statement is then? Paul never shunned anybody to not tell them about Jesus. Man, there are people I have shunned. I took one look at them and said, no, feared them. I forgot to have gospel tracts in my pocket. And then again, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the, God, all the counsel of God. That would be everything. So all means all with all. I am pure from the blood of all men. I have not I have declared to you all the counsel of God. You take those two verses together, and Paul was a hundred percent witness for Jesus Christ. Now you now you're taking me away from the occult of the all. Paul has said in two verses. Number two verse, I have declared everything God has told me to tell you. Number two, number two verse or the first verse, I have not, I am no bounds guilty of any man's souls from withholding the gospel. I can't say that. I don't think any other Christian can say that. And yet I know Christians that put themselves on a high tower, on a high platform, an ivory uh, uh, throne. And you sure can't match to what Paul has done then, according to that verse. There are going to be people at the great white throne judgment who are going to point their fingers at me and say, I knew who you were and you didn't tell me. You take my last job. I was I was prevented from giving the gospel. I got tracks out, but I didn't really say anything. And yet Paul says, all men. Paul said, all the counsel. I can't say that. I've failed there. there. I don't know if I finished the statement. There'll be people at the great white throne judgment that will say, that guy never told me, and he was a Christian. I will be guilty of not telling them about Jesus. I wish I could be Paul. Take heed therefore unto yourselves that to all the flock over... The which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer. He's preaching to the preachers of Ephesus to feed the church of God. Now watch this. Which he has purchased with his own blood. Now let's stop there for a minute. All right. I'm saved by blood. Paul says, I am pure from the blood of all men. I am saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died on the cross, shed his blood that I may be without sin. The precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot, Peter says. Behold the Lamb of God, which the Lamb in, in Passover shed its blood. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. If I'm washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, I become a member of the church, not by roles, not by voting, but by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am a member of the church. When the rapture comes, I will meet in the clouds with the church. That will separate us from the world. If you're not washed in the blood, you're not going with the rapture. You're not part of the church. If you are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you are part of the church. And this verse here says the church of God, which he goes back to God. 
and the Holy Spirit has purchased with his own blood. That blood that made the church is the same blood that's upon Calvary's cross. Jesus is God and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Jesus and God. And God is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That verse backs up the Trinity by the blood. So you go tell your Jehovah Witnesses, they don't want to believe Jesus is God. They can do a belly flop in the lake of fire and suffer the pain for her eternity. Because I am in the church of God by the blood. And that blood was shed upon Calvary. For I know this. Now watch this. He's talking to the Ephesians. So when you read the, 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 the epistle to the Ephesians, take note. For I know this, that after my departing, he's going to Jerusalem, but he's also going to Rome. Shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock? He's saying as far as 60 AD, there's going to be church splits. There's going to be church problems. You're going to have people, some of, some of the members of the church are going to be devoured and eaten by wolves. Wolves in sheep's clothing. That's exactly what Jesus preached. So that's one of the counsels that, that Paul was given by Jesus. Wolves are going to come in. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things. Your own brethren of your own church are going to deceive people. To draw away disciples after them. People who have disciplined themselves are going to be pulled away after. Paul already spoke it. Why are you going to be shocked that it happens? If you're shocked that people are being pulled out of your church by wolves and people within your church, you have not studied Acts. You have not studied what Jesus said. You have not studied the epistles of Paul because he'll say this over and over and over. The warning is, you have not read Jude. You have not read Peter. There are people who are going to enter into the church, whether saved or lost, and they're going to deceive even the very ones that are disciplined. Very elect, it says, right? Yeah. So, if he's preaching to the pastor, what do you think he's telling the pastor? You better build yourself up. You better ready to fight. The fight is on, Christian soldier. Therefore, watch. You better keep out for those flocks. It is your job as an over overseer to watch that sheep. The flock that's under the Holy Ghost, that's saved by the blood of God, by Jesus Christ. There are going to be people coming from the outside and people coming from the inside. You better watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. It's been a three-year ministry for Paul to say, you better watch out for these idiots because they'll do damage. And Paul preached that message with tears. And now, brethren, speaking to saved people, overseers, I command you to God. Ooh. I don't command of God. I command you to God that to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you inheritance among all them that are sanctified, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. I haven't want nothing. I didn't see later on to say, I, I, you know what? I even had to work for what I needed. Yea, ye so yourselves know that these hands had ministered unto my necessity. I paid for my own bills sometimes. I paid for my own needs. And to them that were with me, Luke needed something. I paid for it. I worked for it. I fought and worked and made money and earned barbering. I have showed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, the lambs. They don't know any better. 
The injured sheep, they can't defend themselves. The sick sheep, they can't take care of themselves. The mother lamb that's got the mother sheep that's got a bunch of lambs and no ram to take to help her. The commission Paul gives to these Ephesians uh, overseers, you better watch out and take care of those sheep. And to remember the Lord, the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to, to give than to receive. I coveted no man's silver or gold apparel. It is better to bless it to give than to receive. You know what Paul's telling these overseers? Don't do it for the money. If you have to, go work for it. I did. And there are people going into and pumping out of these, these, these college, Bible colleges, sem, seminaries, coming out of it, that they're going to go behind that pulpit to make money, get a gold tooth, and drive around a Cadillac. Or whatever the big car name is today. I just told you how old I am. And you know, how do you know? There are churches out there just Sunday morning that pastor still earns a yearly salary. Really? For one day work? And then they'll have the nerve, you get a funeral, they, they will give you a bill for the funeral. Or they'll give you a bill to be married. They'll charge you for things. For candles. With a little coin box. I remember those days. That's another religion, but still. Now it is more blessed to give than to receive. Can you find that somewhere in the Gospels? Do you imagine Luke, now if he's writing the Gospel of uh, Paul? Jesus never said that. You ever read John 21, 25? Well, I can't quote the, vote, the verse for me, but it didn't say that if we, if we were to write everything that Jesus said and did, we couldn't contain all the volumes. Now, if Paul wasn't around when Jesus was around, where would he get Jesus saying? Is it, you, are you going to tell me Paul's a liar? I'm not going to so dare to say Paul's a liar. And he says, remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You can't find that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You read John 21, 25. Paul had to pick that up from Jesus somewhere. And he tells you, you better watch that flock for deceivers, and you better not make it a money gain saying ministry. And when he had, had thus spoken, that's the end of the message. Verse 26 to 35 is his message to the ones of, of Ephesus, the overseers. And there are men in pulpits today that are in it for the money. Since 1995, and, and, and your prayer request, and we'll send you a little hanky, and the prayer request has been found in the dumpsters when the checks have been cashed. You get the pastor's got, the, in some of these churches, especially these modern churches, he's got the most expensive car in the parking lot. He's got an airplane. Maybe even a ship. That's wrong. That money's supposed to go to the ministries and missionaries, not to the pastor. And when he had thus spoken, he knelt down and prayed with them. And they all wept sore. So that all can be all. And if it's an all like we th say it is, I got to say, verse 26, I take you record this day that I am pure from, I am pure from the blood of all. Boy, has something done that I've never done. There are people I have not told purposely. Does that sound funny for me? Purposely and hidingly, you know, cowardly have not told people about Jesus. I should have. 
There are people, God says, give them a gospel track. I pull that thing out of my pocket, and by the end of the day, it's gone back in my pocket. I can't say that verse. I wish I could. They all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. Sorry most of all for the words which he spake. Look at that. They're not sorry because Paul's going. Oh, our world's greatest preacher, Paul. Can I get some more CD? You're going away. We're not going to see. No, they're not. They're sorry because their flock, the people that are under them, are going to be deceived. That's what's making them sorrow. Man has a free will. The free will from some of these people is they're going to fall to deceivers. And these guys have no power over it. All they can do is remember, be a watch, and preach against. Try to stand up and fight. But the decision comes down to the people themselves. For the words which he spank, that they should see his face no more. They're not going to see him no more. And they accompanied him into the ship. And that's how they did their traveling. Ship. He's at a seaport. And he's going to get on that ship. And he's going to tell people about Jesus Christ. Wish I was that faithful. All the time. Every time. But I'm not. My prayers would be that it would be.